Songs allow a person to put their own imagination, experiences, and dreams into the lyrics. Uh, people can interpret it many ways. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most controversial albums. If they don't want to hear the two live crew, then they don't buy no ticket. They won't be at that concert. They like obscure images because it gives kids something to hold on to that their parents won't understand. So, if I said to uh, somebody, hey, your stairway lies in the whispering wind, I'd basically be telling them that they're going to hell because the whispering wind was the Piper's path. For this list, we'll be ranking the biggest albums that made headlines and ruffled feathers at the time of their release, and perhaps still do today. We'll be saving the albums that were controversial because of their cover art for another day. Also, we'll be discussing some sensitive content, so fair warning for the road ahead. Did any of these shock you? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Rain and Blood – Slayer Heavy metal has always been a genre that's ripe for controversy, but toss in the legendary intensity of thrash metal icon Slayer into the mix? Well, that's a perfect storm for concerned parents. Slayer was always faster and heavier than their contemporaries, but their definitive musical statement, Rain in Blood, was also notable for its more earthbound lyrics. Songs about damsels and dragons were now replaced with demons, pain, suffering, and the very real horrors of war. Specifically, lyrics for the song Angel of Death tackled infamous Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele. It was instant notoriety for a band already used to shocking nearly everyone that crossed their path. Number 19. Beggar's Banquet – The Rolling Stones the man downstairs was all the rage during the late 1960s and into the 1970s thanks to Time magazine articles like Is God Dead and the rise of demonic horror movies like Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. The Rolling Stones had their finger on the pulse of this controversy and courted it with the opening track on their 1968 album Beggar's Banquet. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of a way. The song was Sympathy for the Devil, sung from Satan's own personal point of view, as a distinguished man of wealth and taste. This wasn't the only bit of controversy either. The band was forced to initially scrap their idea of having a rundown toilet and graffiti on the cover, as it was considered too obscene. Call me Lucifer. Number 18. In Utero – Nirvana There were both internal and external controversies behind the recording and release of Nirvana's last studio album, In Utero. Hey, wait, For starters, there were conflicts over whether the sound should be closer to the more polished production of Nevermind, or if they should go with Steve Albini's intent to create something different. Then there was the actual album content, with one song title in particular generating controversy and cover art that led to the album being edited for big chains like Walmart. Said song became Waif Me, and the album's back cover art was changed so that it could be sold on their shelves. What else should I be? All about Jesus. Number 17, Led Zeppelin 4. Led Zeppelin. We honestly don't have enough time to detail all of the bad behavior and tall tales that made Led Zeppelin one of the most controversial bands of their day. However, we will be focusing specifically on the iconic classic rock group's fourth full length. There's a lady who showed all that glitters is gold. Call it Zoso, call it Four Symbols, or just Led Zeppelin 4, but the album was deliberately designed to increase the Led Zepp mystique to an almost maddening level. And the forests will echo his laughter. The symbols themselves leaned into the band's reputation as practitioners of the occult, an idea that was compounded by rumors that songs like Stairway to Heaven contained backward satanic messages. Raise your hands if you heard that. Was it deliberate? Probably not, but it helped solidify the Led Zeppelin legend even more as absolutely one of a kind. Number 16. Wasp. Wasp. 
It may seem silly today to think that theatrical rock music could be the subject of a U.S. Senate hearing, but parents were not messing around when it came to satanic panic and heavy metal during the 1980s. Some of the album covers are very explicit. Al Gore's wife, Tipper, even formed a committee titled the Parents Music Resource Center that tried to censor and silence artists ranging from Prince and Twisted Sister to our subject of the entry, Wasp. And some of these artists are engaged in cultural strip mining. They are selling explicit sex and violence to younger and younger kids. The band's debut was part of the committee's Filthy 15, thanks to its most infamous song, Animal. And that wasn't the only bit of craziness Wasp brought to the table. The shock rockers were also known for their extremely crude stage shows. They were practically tailor-made for conservative censorship. Blackie Lawless of the group Wasp have an album out and it now bears a warning label, Explicit Lyrics Parental Advisory. Number 15. Lies. Guns N' Roses. Love them or hate them, there's no denying that Guns N' Roses absolutely lived the life about which they sang. They were unequivocally the real deal, a refreshingly dangerous rock and roll party that courted controversy from the very first note. All these gay activist groups jumped on our, our case yeah. for being involved with this to the point where there was a question as to whether or not it was even safe for us to do this gig. Their second album, Lies, also known as GNR Lies, contains lyrics that got W. Axl Rose and Co. in some seriously hot water. All we need is just a one in a Million was the main offender, as it featured lyrics that got the singer accused of racism and homophobia. I don't think people took the time to listen to the third verse and figure that one out, because it says radicals and racists don't point your finger at me. Elsewhere, Used to Love Her got the band labeled as misogynistic, although guitarist Slash has joked that the song was actually about Rose's dog. Hmm. Number 14, Blizzard of Oz. Ozzy Osbourne. Most of us know all about the bad behavior Ozzy Osbourne has gotten himself into over the years. The man was already a rock icon from his days fronting Black Sabbath. But metal fans were beyond anxious about Oz's first solo album. Blizzard of Oz did not disappoint musically, but it also arrived with its fair share of controversy thanks to one particular track. A young man named John McCollum tragically ended his life in 1984, allegedly after listening to the song. He didn't appear to have any problems that anyone was aware of. According to Osborne, the lyrics were actually about alcoholism. And the song's about like the dangers of alcoholism, like alcohol will kill her just like any other drug will. McCollum's parents sued the vocalist and his record label for the song's apparent influence on their son, but the case was dismissed due to Ozzy's First Amendment right to free speech. The boy must have been pretty messed up before he ever heard an Ozzy record. And uh, I mean, I can't help that, you know. I feel very sad for the boy. Number 13, The Mysterious Dom Satanas, Mayhem. When does extreme metal become too extreme? This question and more were asked by fans, bands, and media outlets alike when Norwegian black metal stormed out of the underground during the early 90s. But everything leads back to, uh, to, to our main agenda. It's, it's, it's spreading uh, the word of Satan. The genre saw real-life murder and arson committed by its participants, including those of this entry's band, Mayhem. There were infamous internal conflicts within Mayhem, which led to its founder, Oystein Euronymous Arshet, being killed by his bassist, Varg Vikernes. The Mysterious Dom Satanas is certainly a musical cornerstone for the genre, but a request by Orshet's parents for Mayhem's new bassist, Necro Butcher, to remove Vikernes' bass tracks was ignored, and the album remains a chilling reminder of these events. <laughs> Number 12, Frankenchrist, Dead Kennedys. We've mentioned our criteria for albums being censored for controversial album art, but what about a controversial insert? The political punk rock legends Dead Kennedys and specifically frontman Jello Biafra were the victims of censorship over the inclusion of a poster featuring a work by surrealist art icon R.H. Geiger. 
A poster reproduction of Landscape XX was deemed obscene, and Biafra was charged with distributing, quote, harmful matter to minors. I'm just doing my job, you know, so say uncle and we'll take you to the mental health zoo. Biafra discussed the ordeal on his spoken word album, High Priest of Harmful Matter, particularly how police raided his apartment and the financial strain it brought upon the band's record label. Number 11, Like a Virgin, Madonna. Like a virgin. There have been a bevy of influential artists out there, but very few can claim to have single-handedly steered the fashion sense of teenage girls around the world. Madonna did just that in the wake of her sophomore album Like a Virgin in 1984. The album's major singles, which included Material Girl, Dress You Up, and the title track, were all smash hits, but didn't land without some controversy thanks to Madonna's racy image and sexualized live performances. News outlets across the globe all clamored for footage of the material girl writhing on stage, decked out in lace and embarking upon her career as a certified pop sensation. She wouldn't stop there, of course, continually courting controversies with follow-ups like Like a Prayer and Erotica. Number 10, as nasty as they want to be, Two Live Crew. We've discussed a lot of hard rock and heavy metal throughout our list, but hip hop has also seen its fair share of run-ins with the censors. Case in point, Two Live Crew, who seemed to love inciting anger with their 1989 LP, As Nasty As They Wanna Be. It pulled no punches with its references to sexuality, especially in its breakthrough hit, Me So Horny. Is the album crass? Sure. But Two Live Crew deserved to sing their songs the way they wanted to sing them, and they found roadblocks in their way at nearly every turn. These people who essentially say that they're holding a mirror up to the street and reflecting the street in music as an art form. And the street is a nasty place at times. The album was even labeled legally obscene by a Florida judge, and three members of the band would later be arrested just for performing a show. We have the freedom of expression. We have the freedom of choice. Number nine, Stained Class, Judas Priest. The story behind Judas Priest's fourth album, Stained Class, is one mired in controversy, thanks to a lawsuit brought against the band by the families of two teenagers who decided to take their own lives, allegedly after listening to Better By You, Better Than Me. The boys' families claimed that the band inserted subliminal messages which said do it behind frontman Rob Halford's vocal in the song, despite the fact that the song was in fact a cover of the band Spooky Tooth rather than a Judas Priest original. Still, the trial remains a tragic and truly controversial moment in hard rock history. Number 8. Tomb of the Mutilated – Cannibal Corpse Whew, where do we start? Maybe with the graphic, oft-censored cover art displaying two rotting corpses engaging in a sex act? Or maybe the fact that Cannibal Corpse was forbidden from performing tracks from their first three albums in countries like Germany. <laughs> then, of course, there's the band's appearance in Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Uh, wait, what? Excuse me, it's Greg here! Thank you! Jim Carrey's death metal fixation aside, the controversy behind Cannibal Corpse's third studio album continues to this day. And if you don't believe us, just take a look at the track listing. Number 7. The Marshall Mathers LP, Eminem. By the turn of the new millennium, Eminem was no stranger to controversy, thanks to the unflinching realism presented on the Slim Shady LP in 1999. That backlash only increased when Eminem released the substantially darker and even more personal The Marshall Mathers LP, an album chock full of adult themes and extreme lyrical barbs, which made its predecessor sound positively lightweight. And I am an easy target for conservative politicians and parents alike, the Marshall Mathers LP shook up the entertainment world and essentially changed music censorship forever. I love you, Slim. We could have been together. Think about it. You ruined it now. I hope you can't sleep and you dream about it. Number 6. Fear of a Black Planet, Public Enemy. 
Hip-hop legends Public Enemy have always been considered some of the genre's most intelligent and politically active artists, but it was this very socially aware release which also made them the targets of controversy. Classics like 911 is a joke, Burn Hollywood Burn and Fight the Power were all huge hits. But the band's profile hit hard times when founding member Professor Griff began spouting anti-Semitic rhetoric during interviews. Griff's comments would lead to his eventual dismissal from the group, although Public Enemy's stance as one of hip-hop's elder statesmen would remain secure. There's nothing that the black makers use to earn, 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 burn Hollywood, burn. Number 5. Never mind the bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols Seeing Johnny Rotten today, it might be hard to imagine the powder keg of fury unleashed by the Sex Pistols back in 1977, but at one point, it seemed as if everyone was pissed at these British punks. Whether it was the band's entourage habitually sporting Nazi regalia, or the fact that God Save the Queen took aim squarely at England's Elizabeth II, the Pistols were never far from public ire. Frontman Johnny Rotten and crew would also be in a memorably tense television debut, where the band cussed out their host on live TV before eventually imploding in a blaze of self-destructive glory so fitting to their punk rock roots. Number 4. Mechanical Animals – Marilyn Manson there have been few hard rock and heavy metal artists that capture the public spotlight quite like Marilyn Manson. Albums like Portrait of an American Family and Antichrist Superstar had already put the band in cultural crosshairs, so when it came time to release Mechanical Animals, detractors were on high alert. The studio effort's artwork is striking in and of itself, but when people started to make connections between the album and the tragic events at Columbine in 1999, the band really came under fire. It wasn't the first controversy Manson faced, and it certainly would not be the last, as he turned himself into the police for two counts of assault in 2021. Number 3. Body Count Body Count in the early 90s, it was hard not to be aware of the controversy surrounding Body Count. The album raised ire and criticism almost immediately due to its aggressive lyrical content. But it was Body Count's closing track that caused the biggest media sensation. The song's confrontational stance on police violence was directly challenged in the media by actor and NRA spokesman Charlton Heston with many others joining in the call for the album's censorship. Body Count's label would eventually reissue the album without the offending track, ironically replacing it with Freedom of Speech, a collaboration between Ice-T and Jello Biafra. Number 2. Rage Against the Machine Rage Against the Machine The musical landscape of 1991 was a period of transition for hard rock and heavy metal, and this band stood out as representatives of change throughout the decade. Rage Against the Machine stood in strict defiance to both the hair metal excesses of the 1980s, as well as the emerging grunge movement of the time, and were steeped in political fire and fury. No escape from the mass live rape. Play it again, Jack, and then rewind the tape. This sentiment, born from the protests of the 1960s and 1970s, would serve as a source of controversy for the rap metal band, as frontman Zach De La Rocha's pointed commentaries about world injustice and corruption would go on to define the band's enduring creative legacy. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Fat of the Land, The Prodigy, Late Night Video Controversy. Shake Your Booty, Frank Zappa, banned from airplay in the US. The Downward Spiral, Nine Inch Nails, BDSM during Total Request Live. The Number of the Beast, 
Iron Maiden. Fantasy turned into satanic panic for parents. Want more music content? Watch Mojo produces an original podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. The show provides authentic interviews with artists from all around the world, while also staying true to Watch Mojo's roots with top 10 music banter thrown into the mix. What's the best advice Alice Cooper's ever given you? Looking back at the staying power, does it shock you? Uh, no, we have naked pictures of the right people. If you want exclusive interviews with award-winning artists, producers, singers, songwriters, check out Inner Sleeve. Number one, straight out of Compton, NWA. The impact of NWA is impossible to overstate. The hip hop landscape was very much a different place in 1988 before the group made their debut with Straight Outta Compton. Friend, what's up? Tell them where you're from. Straight Outta Compton. The group were one of the progenitors of the gangster rap genre and gained sufficient controversy over the album's raw and frank lyrical content, which stood in strict contrast to the dance and party vibe associated with many rap acts of the time. So some musicians come at home to get to use profanity when up on the microphone. Instead, Straight Outta Compton described a hard and violent life surrounded by drugs, gangs, and police misbehavior, laying the groundwork for countless hip hop acts in its wake. Cause the police always got something stupid to say. They put out my picture with silence. Cause my identity by itself causes violence. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.